All right, well, I just want to welcome everybody that's in the Connect room. I want to watch it. welcome everybody that's online. We're so glad that you're here and joining us. Um, as I said, this is part six, the, the one on prayer. And so if you have your Bibles, there's going to be a passage that I'm going to uh, jump from, and that is going to be Matthew chapter six. I'm going to get there in just a moment. But, you know, prayer, I, I was going to make this a two-week teaching, and so I'm going to tell you everything you need to know to get all of your prayers answered in 23 minutes and 40 seconds. Let's go, all right? Here we go. We're going to strap in. But, uh, you know, prayer seems one of these things that uh, it, it, it seems kind of obvious on the surface what prayer is, um, but I think prayer is one of the most difficult things for a believer. It, it's one of the most challenging aspects of our faith, and I'm going to unpack that and show you why prayer can be such a challenge. You know, on the surface, you go, well, okay, prayer is just me letting God know what my needs are and trusting and putting those needs at him. So prayer is me coming to God and letting God know, God, we need this, we need this, and we need this. And so that seems like, okay, there's a basic definition, but then prayer begins to get frustrating, doesn't it? Because then we just start to discover that some prayer works, some prayer doesn't work. And prayer takes on this image of a vending machine. And that is, you gotta have exact change for it to work, that there's this alpha numeric code that you gotta be sure you ain't gonna get the, the stick of gum, but you're gonna get the Snickers bar, right? So you gotta punch in the right code. Sometimes you mess that up. The prayer you wanted didn't get answered. Something else happened. Worst case scenario, you get the right change. You put in the right alphanumeric number, and then all of a sudden you see the, the spring go like this, and what happens? The Snicker bar gets hung up, right? It doesn't <laughs> drop. And so you gotta shake the thing. Here, I'm, I'm telling you the truth. More people are killed each year in the United States by vending machines than sharks. True, true, true. <laughs> they, 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 people shake these things and they fall out of them. I mean, this is taking hangry to a whole new level, right? It's like, dude, get a Snickers in you, right? And, and, so, uh, and, and so we get frustrated. And, and so you look even at Scripture and, and it gets crazy. I mean, in 1 Peter 3, we find out that if we're not honoring our wives, that our prayers are hindered. So wives, that's, a, that's your cute, just elbow right there. And, and so we go, okay, well, maybe my prayers aren't being answered because I am not honoring my wife. In James chapter 4, verse 3, it says that if you ask with selfish motives, your prayers won't be answered. And so all of a sudden you go, okay, well, maybe I'm asking for the wrong motives. That's maybe why my prayers aren't being answered. And then you got Mark chapter 11. It says if you have unforgiveness in your heart, he won't hear your prayers. So you're like, oh, okay, so maybe I got to make sure I don't have any unforgiveness and any bitterness in my heart. And then you got James cha chapter 1, verse 5, and it just says that if you ask, don't doubt. Oh, okay, well, maybe I'm asking, but I'm doubting, and I'm, 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 I'm not putting really all my trust. And then to even confuse things even more as you're trying to punch in the right combination to get your prayer to drop down into your life, all of a sudden now you've got Luke chapter 18 of the widow woman, Jesus says, going before the unrighteous judge, and she keeps being persistent, and she keeps pleading her case, and finally the unrighteous judge says, all right, enough already, I'll give you what you want. So now we're thinking maybe my prayers aren't being answered because I just need to plead my case and beg God more until finally he gets tired of my whining and crying and he says, fine, have your blessing, quit bugging me. <laughs> Why don't we just get frustrated and we go, what's the point of prayer? Because sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. At the end of the day, God is going to be God and God's going to do his thing. So why even bother? Have we been there? Because I know I've been there. That's where I've been. And, and so today I want to bring a focus to the power of prayer because the enemy would love nothing more for you to be frustrated in your understanding of what prayer is. The enemy would love nothing more for you to step back and be passive and just come see, come saw. Whatever happens will be, will be. And, and so I'm going to show you the type of prayer that God responds to 100% of the time. That's the good news. Bad news is you're not going to like it, but it's good for us. And so in, if you got your Bibles, just go ahead and open them up, click them on to Matthew chapter 6, and I'll, I'll put it up there too. Uh, 
I grew up a Catholic, and so this, this was the, the first verse, the only verse that I had ever memorized, and we would always do this in a mass, and it's the Lord's Prayer, and it's the disciples that are with Jesus, and they're saying, hey, we don't get it too, so um, teach us how to pray. You know, in the Jewish culture, there are so many different types of prayers. Uh, me and a group were actually leaving for Jerusalem or for Israel tomorrow, and when I was there last time, our guide was um, a modern uh, Greek, uh, a modern Orthodox Jew, and so three times a day, no matter where we were, he was going to spend some time praying. One of the things they pray for is rain. But every time, no matter where we were, if we were on the bus, he kind of went down into the, the stairwell and he would pray at a certain time, three times a day. So you have these disciples that know all these prayers, but they're, they're coming to Jesus and they're saying, you're doing something different. Teach us that. Teach us how you are praying. And, and so Jesus then tells them, well, the first thing you need to do is you need to find a quiet place. You, you see in scripture that whenever Jesus prayed, what did he do? He went away to be alone, didn't he? He, he got away from some of the chaos so he could be with his father. Uh, your heavenly father doesn't like you trying to talk with him while you're texting and checking Facebook no more than your spouse does, okay? And so go, go, that was, kind of, that was supposed to be kind of funny. Uh, <laughs> You know, you know, you know what, Lord, let me just uh, pray. And, you know, he, he, go alone, be alone with him, go to a special place so you have, you're in his presence. And then Jesus said to the disciples, and he gives them this outline that I want to touch on today. And the outline is this. He, he said, teach us to pray. He said, this then is how you should pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we also forgive our debtors, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the hard part first, right in the middle. And that's that verse he gives them. Not my will be done, but your will be done, is what Jesus would echo. But he said it this way, let your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. This verse is one of the hardest verses every believer needs to reconcile right here. This is the one that will decide if you're a disciple. This is the verse that will decide if you're devoted. This is the verse that decides if your faith and Christ is just going to be included to an already busy life, or this verse will determine if everything going on in your life, you slide aside and you put this to be the center and everything gets built on top of it. That's the verse right there. Let your kingdom come, let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Jesus is praying in the garden, crying, knowing he's about to be betrayed, knowing he's about to be tortured, and he throws up this prayer, Lord, if there's any other cup that can come, uh, let that cup come, let this one pass, meaning this, if there's any other way we can save the world without the torture that I know is coming. Lord, I pray for that to happen. That's his prayer, but then notice how he finishes. But not my will, your will be done. Because guess what? The first part of that prayer isn't going to get answered. Not even by the Son of God. And so, your kingdom come, your will be done. This one, uh, I want to give you an example of how this applies to our lives so that we can be devoted to this, okay? You can see why they had to be devoted to prayer. Because it doesn't make sense. If prayer is just me asking for good things, you don't need to, you don't need to remind me to be devoted to that, okay? I'll, all day long, I'll just pray for good things to come into my life. Uh, lots of blessings, Lord, give me this, give me this. My name is Jimmy, give me, give me, give me, right? I don't need to be devoted to that. This... I need to be devoted to because this Jimmy don't like. Not my will, but your will be done. I remember, I, I, I knew this growing up Catholic. I, I knew this prayer, could recite this prayer, but one time I'm reading this in the basement uh, of my home, having my quiet time at a small desk, and I'm going through, and this was probably uh, about 28 years ago, and uh, I get to this. 
And, and I'm just reading it, and I'm like, oh, I know this verse. I've memorized This was the first scripture I ever memorized as a kid. And uh, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. All of a sudden, I stopped, and I literally couldn't read anymore. And I thought, I don't believe that. I was convicted. I, I knew it, and I, if you would have asked me any other time, I would have said, well, yeah, Jesus is first in my life. But all of a sudden I read that, and the Holy Spirit said, you don't believe that. And I thought, I don't believe that. And, and, and I knew I didn't believe it because when I said, not my will be done, but your will be done, here was the thought I had. If God were to ask me to go to Africa, I would not go. <laughs> so I go, well, if I'm not willing to go, then I'm saying, not my will be done, but your will be done as long as it's not Africa. It, it, you can't do those kind of things, you know? That, that doesn't fit in the prayer. And so for three days, I didn't have a quiet time because I knew I couldn't read any further until I reconciled this in my heart. And I, and I just thought, you know, I don't want to go to Africa. I don't want to, Lord, I don't want to go to Africa, but I know I've got to reconcile. Not my will, but your will be done. And so then I remembered, I remembered Isaac and I remembered Abraham putting Isaac on the altar, and he was going to kill Isaac, and the Lord said, wait, stop, I just need to know you were willing to do it. Don't kill him. And I said, I know, I'll tell the Lord I'll go to Africa. I ain't going to Africa. <laughs> well, I'll tell the Lord I'll go to Africa, so he'll go, wait, stop it, I'm good. And then I thought, I literally thought this, I thought, he can read my mind right now. <laughs> And he knows exactly what I'm planning, and he wasn't going to send me to Africa before, but now he's got to teach me a lesson. Oh, God, i got to go to Africa. If I would have just behaved, I would have had to go to Africa. And, and, and for the next three days, man, I was just in this tension in my mind and in my heart. There was no peace. There was this tug of war. And I'm like, I'm going to have to tell Eileen, we got to go to Africa. And I don't want to go to Africa. We got two boys, one or three boys, and, and we just bought our first house. And so finally, I remember uh, I'm sitting there, and I'm almost in tears at this point. And I finally said, Jesus, I'll, I'll go to Africa. I'm in. I can't live this way anymore. I'll go to Africa. And just real clear, I just felt the gentleness of God's spirit said, James, I've never asked you to go to Africa. <laughs> but here's what he said. Whether you're in Battle Creek at the time I lived in Kalamazoo or in Africa, I need your heart surrendered to me without condition. That's what I need. Not my will be done, but your will be done allows our prayer not to be about someone else and about something else, but it allows our prayer to be all about our own heart and allowing God to move in our own heart. Here's what I found. Prayers, yeah, but what about them, are not good prayers to throw up to him. He spikes those right back into your face, I find, right? And we find this in Scripture. I mean, Peter sees, uh, sees John, and, and all of a sudden the, the message or, uh, comes to John, and he goes, um, you're going to die. And all of a sudden, uh, Peter sees John, and he goes, well, what about him, Lord? And he goes, well, what about him? What if it's, it's okay if, if he lives till I come back? There, there's a lot of verses where all of a sudden we try to compare and go, Lord, here's my prayer. My prayer is that you fix my spouse. Lord, here's my prayer. My prayer is you fix my boss. Lord, here's my prayer is you fix somebody else. There was, there was it says in the gospel, a brother shouted out from the crowd to Jesus, says, hey, tell my brother to split the inheritance. He goes, who appointed me to be your arbitrator? Prayers about, yeah, but somebody else don't avail much, but a prayer about availing your own heart and allowing God to speak to it changes everything. Maybe, maybe some of you are going through some heartbreak. One of the toughest times in my life, I was offering up prayers of my heart was broken and my heart was betrayed and this relationship had fallen apart. And, and I was either praying for the relationship to be restored or I was praying for the other person. And, and here's what he revealed to me. I want to talk about your heart. I want to talk about you forgiving that, that's the prayer that I answer, is if you are willing to forgive. Not my will be done, but your will be done. As we look at Scripture, Galatians 2.20 says this, I have been crucified with Christ. I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I live in this body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Boy, I tell you, it is a painful death to die to yourself, isn't it? 
But there is great freedom, great reward when we're willing to let go what's in our hands. Have you all ever heard about those monkey traps? The way they catch monkeys, they hollow out a gourd and they fill it with rice and they put a hole in it so the monkey can reach his hand in. But when he grabs a handful of rice or berries, he can't fit his hand out and it actually traps them. They just sit there because they don't want to let go what's in their hand. So they can't get their hand out of the trap unless they let go, and they don't want to let go. So for hours, the monkey just sits there until somebody comes by and captures them. And our, our will is the same way that we're trapped because we don't want to let go what's in our hands. I, I, I like this. And God is saying, if you let go, I've got something better, but you're not going to get any better until you let go of what you have. Not my will, but your will be done. It is a prayer, and prayer is surrendering our hearts and opening our hearts to what he has. In Luke chapter 9, verse 23, it says this, Then he said to them all, If anyone would come after me, he must deny himself and take up the cross daily and follow me. It is a surrendering of yourself and allowing God to change what's inside of you. We have a, a family that just started coming here really only a couple months ago. I got permission to, to ask this. But it just shows how when you surrender your heart, the prayer that you normally would throw up changes and God does something a little different than what you really wanted him to do, but it's always so much better. And there's a couple that just started coming to this church actually about a month ago and uh, they came in for the first time to Victory Life Church. And, and she's there and she's praying during worship, Lord, we got no money and we need money. And all of a sudden the Holy Spirit speaks to her and says, I want you to quit smoking. She had smoked a pack and a half a day for 25 years. The answer she was probably hoping for was maybe somebody would shake her hand and put $500 in it, right? There, there's the prayer that we always want. The answer to the prayer was, I want you to stop smoking. And she said supernaturally, instantaneously, she was delivered of an addiction she had for 25 years. She said, I haven't smoked in 40 days. Every two weeks, she's saving about 70 to 80 bucks every two weeks now. The Lord provided. She goes, God has given me a new job with amazing benefits. He has restored the brokenness that's in our family. Our family is now sitting around and having dinner at the dinner table for the first time. He brought healing into our marriage. It's only 39 days, he, she said. It has been amazing to see what God has done. But here's the thing. It all started with a prayer that although she was crying out, she had opened her heart to ultimately say, Father, not my will, but your will be done. And he goes, okay, I got a crazy path. And if you'll trust me and you'll lay it down, I'll get you there. These are the prayers that begin to get answered in our lives is when we surrender ourselves to him. In 1 John 5, 14, it says, this is the confidence we have in approaching God. You know, that's the confidence we want to have rather than guessing if our prayer is going to be prayed. If my prayer is this, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Father, I'll walk through the fire if that's what you're calling me to do. Father, I'll do whatever your will is, is my heart. Whatever you call me to do, I will do. When that is our heart, it says that we can boldly become before the throne of God, that my prayer isn't trying to change God and move God to do what I need. Prayer is now changing my heart to step into alignment with what God wants to do. God is looking to fulfill his glory and he's looking for people that are willing to surrender themselves to be the conduit to connect with. Does that make sense? And so it says, this is the confidence that we have in approaching God that if and I have that because that's conditional. God's love is unconditional. Keep those, make sure you keep those straight. God's love is unconditional. There's no if in God's love, right? If is a condition to blessing. If, if, we, have, if we ask anything according to his will, not my will, but his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever he asks, we know that we have what he has asked for. Last week we talked about prayer, and one of the things I said is you need to hear God. You need to hear him give you a rhema word. Now that's his will. I can stand on his will. I can pray his will to come and to be done on earth as it is in heaven. Our prayer is surrendering ourselves to get our heart in line with him. That's what prayer is, and that's the prayer that gets answered all the time. And here's, now that I've showed you the difficult, let me show you how he makes it easy. He makes it easy or easier because to die to yourself is always tough. 
It would be hard for me to go to Africa today, but I'd be willing. But there's other things that he asked me to do that I have to die to. I have to let go of, I have to trust in him. I have to trust in his ways. But here's what I wanna share with you on how it's easier. Before, notice he said, he didn't start off with pray this way, not your will, his will. He didn't do that. He started this way. Our Father art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. That's where you start. That's where he makes it easier. You know, this prayer, I've been praying for, for about 33, 34 years now. And when you came in, you were given a, a card, yes? A little bookmark. In Psalms 100, it says that we enter his gates with thanksgiving, his courts with praise. It's funny, because I love this card. You got this card, and then I realized, well, before this message, I did another message, and I gave you that card. It has the same thing on the back. And before that message, I gave you that card that has the same thing on the back. Are you kind of getting that Pastor James is kind of into this one, right? This is kind of his thing. Well, before all of those, 33 years ago, I got that card. And on this card, 33 years ago, 34 years ago, I was going through the hardest time of my life. And I was broken. I was broken hearted, I'd lost everything. And on the top of this card are the names of God that I put on the bookmark I gave you. Here's what I'm saying, that little bookmark I gave you is something that I've lived for 34 years and it was something I discovered during the darkest time of my life. A time when I was so broken that, that I, I, I didn't know how to pray. Where there was hopelessness, there was depression, discouragement, and darkness filling my life. But then I discovered these names of God. And in that moment, when I knew I was supposed to forgive, when it was impossible to forgive because the hurt was so deep, that I, when I felt I had no hope, and I didn't have the strength, I just simply came into the presence of God. If God seems distant to you, the way you come into his presence is you enter his courts with thanksgiving. Gratitude is one of the healthiest emotions you can have. Gratitude makes what I have in my life more than enough. Father, you, you, have, you have done so much more, you don't, owe me a, you don't owe me a single thing. A heart of gratitude comes into the doorway, comes into the gates, and then you approach him through the uh, courts of praise. And these names of God are, are a time of praise. And I pray these names. Uh, I, I, I will just, this is, how I, this is how I do it. This is how I've been doing it for, for three decades. As I just begin my, my prayer and I just declare his name and I just say, Father, thank you. Thank you, you are Jehovah Sid Canoe. And you know what's interesting is the word Jehovah is so holy, the Jews won't even, they can't, they don't say it, and they, they certainly don't spell it. And, and so it is so holy and so uh, reverent. They'll say Adonai. And, but he uses the word Jehovah when he is talking to Moses, and he's going to deliver, he's going to use Moses to deliver all the people out of bondage and out of slavery. And Moses starts going, well, people are going to ask questions. Who, who are they going to say you are? And he says, I'm Jehovah, and it means I am. I am. I am. How, how would you like to just, he's saying, I am the one. I'm the one. I am. Well, I need healing. Well, I am. I am healing. <laughs> well, well I, 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 I need righteousness. Well, I am. That's who I am. I, I am righteous. And he, and he takes on these names. And so I begin to praise him. And I, and I just say, Lord, thank you that you are my righteousness. Sometimes I'll mention the, the Hebrew name and I'll say, Lord, thank you. You are Jehovah Sid Canoe. Thank you, Lord, that you are my righteousness. Thank you that when shame and guilt come upon me, when I start thinking uh, of, uh, of a different identity, thank you that you are righteous. Thank you that you gave me your righteousness. Thank you, Lord, that you are Jehovah Makadesh. Lord, you are the one that sanctifies me. All the times I mess up, you're always there to sanctify me. 
Thank you that you are Jehovah Shalom and thank you that you are my peace and my life, that there's chaos and there's storms and there's waves crashing. And Father, you are the Prince of Peace. You are the one that quiets every storm in my life. Thank you that you are Jehovah Shalom. Thank you, you are Jehovah Rophi, that you are the one that heals. And we did that last week. It is not chemo that heals, it is the cross that heals. It is your stripes that heal. Thank you, Lord, that you are my healer. Thank you that you, Jehovah Jireh, that you are my provider. Lord, in this transition time of my life, Lord, as I, as I know that you are my provider. I'm not an orphan anymore, but I'm an adopted son. Or you might say, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm your daughter. Father, that you are my provider. My provision isn't in me, but my provision is in you. Thank you that you meet all my needs according to your riches and glory. Thank you, Lord, that you are Jehovah Nisi, that you are my banner. Thank you, our Jehovah Rohi, that you are my shepherd, the shepherd that goes after the one lost. When I wander off, you come find me. You will never leave me. You will never say, forsake me because you are the great shepherd. And not my will, but your will be done. It's a little bit easier, isn't it, when you declare his name and you give him praise. I don't know where you're at in life. I don't know what you're going through, but I'm telling you, for 33 years, I've declared the names of God over my life. During the darkest times of my life, times when God seems distant, this is the card, this is the bookmark that I go back to, to come home, to sit in the presence of my Father. That is the power of prayer, come into his presence, and when you're in his presence, you feel the love and the trust and the power to surrender your heart and to simply say, Father, not my will, but your will be done. Amen? Amen. All right, let me pray for you. You know, there's only one that can heal brokenness in your life, and that is Jesus Christ. <laughs> And there's one question that every heart needs to have answered. And the question is this, is my heart right with God? And I want to give you a moment to just think about that. Lord, is my heart right with you? And if you're sitting there going, I hope so, or I think so, today you can know for sure. You might be saying, well, I try to be a good person. I try to do the right thing. Trying hard to be good doesn't make you right with God. But the Bible says in Romans, those who call upon the name of the Lord will be saved. And what that verse means is there's got to be a defining moment in our lives where we didn't just believe in God, but there's got to be a moment in our lives where we surrender and we say, Jesus, come into my life, I'm yours. And if you don't have a defining moment like that, this is your moment right now. It, it'll, it'll change your life. It'll last forever. And so I, I, I want to pray for those that don't know if their heart's right with God, that don't have a defining moment where they ask Christ into their life. I want to pray for those that say, I know I'm far from God. Include me in that prayer. On the count of three, if you want to be included in that prayer, I don't know if my heart's right with God, but today I want to know. On the count of three, I'm just going to ask you to raise your hand. Just lift it up and say, include me in that prayer. Don't miss this opportunity. One, two, here it is right now. Three, just raise your hand. Include me in that prayer. Thank you. I see that hand in the back there. Keep your hand up. I want to give you some information. If you're in the connect room, lift your hand up. I see that hand. Is there another? Is there another? Right over here. Yes. Awesome. Right there. Awesome. Is there another? Include me in that prayer. Romans 10, 9 says this. If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, believe in your heart God raised him from the dead. It says you will be saved. What a beautiful promise because he's not waiting for you to fix yourself to get good enough because you can't do that. But if you'll call out for help, he's faithful to rescue. And that's what we're going to do now. So if you raised your hand or you meant to, if you're in the connect room or even watching online, I want you to pray this prayer out loud. And church, if you'd pray along for encouragement, just pray, Oh, Heavenly Father, I come to you in Jesus' name. I believe you died on a cross, that you rose again, and you're seated on the throne. Jesus, forgive me. For all that I've done wrong. And I choose to forgive all others. Come into my life today and forever. I am yours. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.